What do the open and curved arrows point to? Hint, this individual had new hoarseness. In this axial CT, we see slight medial rotation of the left arytenoid cartilage, as indicated by the curved arrow. There is also a prominent dilated left laryngeal ventricle, indicated by the open arrow. This is sometimes referred to as the sail sign, because it mimics the spinnaker of a boat. At a slightly higher level in the same patient, we see asymmetric enlargement of the left piriform sinus, indicated by the open arrow. There's also medial positioning of a thickened left airy epiglottic fold, indicated by the straight arrow. Overall, these imaging features are consistent with left vocal cord paralysis, especially given the symptoms of hoarseness. In this same patient, axial CT at the level of the aortic arch shows a large mediastinal mass involving the left recurrent laryngeal nerve as it courses under the aortic arch. It's important to remember that causative lesions anywhere from the medulla, which is the origin of the vagus nerve, the 10th cranial nerve, to the recurrent laryngeal nerve may cause left vocal cord paralysis. Again, the left vagus nerve extends into the mediastinum, recurs via the aortopulmonary window, and then the recurrent laryngeal nerve ascends to the larynx in the tracheoesophageal groove. Here is an anteroposterior 3D volume rendering of the airway. The straight arrow shows an enlarged piriform sinus, the open arrow shows an enlarged laryngeal ventricle, and the straight dark arrow shows flattening of the subglottic arch. As we saw in this patient, symptoms include hoarseness, but also may include dysphonia or a breathy voice. Other symptoms may include frequent aspiration, particularly liquids, a poor cough, a foreign body sensation, or shortness of breath. Here is an axial PET slash CT. The curved arrow shows anteromedial arytenoid rotation, and the straight arrow shows ballooning of the laryngeal ventricle. The open arrow shows asymmetric uptake in the normal right cord. This is not to be mistaken for a tumor, because in this case, there were decreased or absent FTG uptake in the paralyzed left vocal cord. There are a variety of treatments, including Teflon injection, which is shown here. This axial CT shows an amorphous high density in the left true vocal cord. Digging into the history, we learned that there was a prior Teflon injection for this indication. It's critical not to mistake this for malignancy, as Teflon can cause a granulomatous reaction, resulting in a false positive PET scan. Here's an example of how hot it can look like on PET. Now you know a lot about left vocal cord paralysis. Please subscribe for more awesome anatomy and radiology videos.